John Lee has a nice image. He says, we keep stashing things away, stashing things away in our memory. We did this, we did that, that person did this, this person did that. He says it's like someone plowing a field. And you stick a bag on your water buffalo's leg. You collect all the dirt as it comes off the plow. And of course you're going to get weighed down. You get to the point where you can't make any progress. So when you're sitting here meditating, you've got to unhook the bag. Things that happened today, things that happened last week, or whatever you tend to stash away in the mind, you just got to let it go, let it go. You want to totally be right here. This is what having a right frame of reference for right mindfulness is all about. Anything that's not relevant to the breath right now, you just let it go. Don't keep it. Let it pass. It's called subduing greed and distress with reference to the world. Because you really totally want to be here and you want to be totally in this frame of reference. When the Buddha talks about becoming, we are creating a new state of becoming here. There's going to be a new world here and a new you in this world. Which doesn't have to be weighed down by the you that's gone through life so far, or the worlds that you've been through so far. So to be fully in this world, you have to put those other worlds aside. It's like those cases in Thailand. Every now and then you, you get a child who remembers a previous lifetime. And the parents will do their very best to stop those memories. Because the child, if it holds on to those memories of what it was in a previous lifetime, will never really fully adjust into the present life. So you've got to be right here. There's nothing but the breath. There's nothing but awareness. And as for the pains that come up in the body, those two are things that you want to be able to put aside, to let go. This is where the Buddha's image of making your mind like space is really useful. He says nobody can write anything on space. And my level has to do with the things that other people do and other people say. And if you put up a surface for them to write on, of course, there's going to be a lot of scribbling all over your mind. Think of that image in the, the old Zen koan on the one hand. The one hand comes to clap you, but you don't clap back. They can write as much as they want, but you're not going to keep it. It applies also, though, to the, the pain you may be feeling in the body right now. The pain of the last second is gone now. So remind yourself, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. These pains may arise, but they go away, they go away. Let them go. There's too much of a tendency in the mind to make a map of the body as to where your pains are right now. And then you hold on to the map. You're afraid to let it go for fear that the pains will move and go places where you don't expect them. We don't realize that part of the problem is we're trying to pin them down. And in pinning them down, we give them more reality than they really need to have. So in thinking that we're protecting ourselves from danger, we actually cause more pain for ourselves. So where there's a pain, you don't have to remember it. Let the pain write on space as well. The only thing you want to remember is the fact that you want to stay with the breath, and you want to settle down with the breath. Because that's what right mindfulness is all about. It's there to get you into right concentration. You look at the frames of reference that are being offered there. There's the body, and there's feeling, and there's mind. Those are the first three. Body, of course, is the breath. Feeling is a sense of ease that you're trying to develop through the breath. And the mind is the awareness that you're trying to keep focused in the body with one focal point, but at the same time a sense of the whole body around that focal point. Well, these are the components of concentration. 
focused on the breath, when there's a sense of ease and well-being, you let that fill the whole body. At the same time, your awareness fills the whole body. So we're talking about the same things here, simply that mindfulness is how you get the mind into concentration. When the Buddha describes the four jhanas in right concentration, he's talking about these are the stages the mind will go through, but he doesn't tell you how to get them there to begin with. In the description of right concentration, that's in the description of right mindfulness. You stay focused on the breath, say, in and of itself, ardent, alert, mindful, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. That's how you get into concentration. Stick with one object. You're ardent in wanting to do this right. You're alert to what you're actually doing. And you keep in mind just all the things you know to stay with the breath, and everything else gets left behind. It's part of another world right now. So you don't want to hang on to the old fragments of the world outside or your identity outside of the meditation. You can let those go as well. You need your safe space right here. Because a lot of things that happen in the world really do involve distress. If you hold on to them, you're holding on to old wounds. And there may be times when it's proper to sort of sort through the old wounds and tend to them, but right now you don't need them. And the identity of you wounded by those things, those aspects you can put aside as well. So you're right here, fully right here. And any reference that would come up that would remind you who you are and where you are and what those, you know, the questions they ask when people come out of an operation. What year is it? Who's the president? You can forget those things right now. It's just awareness, breath, feeling of ease, body. That's it. As for the fourth frame of reference, those are the qualities you need to keep in mind to either maintain something good when you've got it or to deal with something unskillful that's coming up. On the one hand, for instance, you may want to keep in mind the teachings on the five hindrances to recognize when something comes up, well, what is it? Say sensual desire comes up, we don't usually think, oh, this is a hindrance, and then deal with it right away. Or an immediate, untrained reaction, of course, is that, hey, this is fun. Let's look into this. But here you've got to remind yourself, if you're in the world of concentration, taking on the identity of a meditator. These things are hindrances. They're going to get in the way of that world. They're going to eat it up, destroy it. And John Lee compares them to weevils that destroy a plant. So when you recognize that it's a hindrance, the next step is what do you do to get rid of it? Well, first you've got to recognize that when it comes, when it came, why did it come? What sparked it? You want to be on top of these things. This is why one of the important skills in meditating is to learn to watch the mind and recognize the little signs it gives that it's going to move away. Its grasp on the breath begins to loosen up a little bit, and part of it is looking around for where it might go. And that looking around comes in little blips, it's not continuous. And then it waits until you're Attention is turned someplace else, and then it goes, and you black out for a bit, and you find yourself someplace else. You want to watch out for that so you don't black out, so you say, oh, this is how the mind wanders off. Well, you just bring it right back. And then you get to see not only the arising of the hindrance, but also the fact that it's got a cause. There's something that was wrong, something lacking in the mind. Then part of the mind proposed, oh, how about going over here? So all too often what's happened is that your attention to the breath has become mechanical. You're just going through the motions. At that point, the concentration is not satisfying. It doesn't really hit home. So you're trying to raise the level of your sensitivity to what would really feel good right now, 
right now, right now, each breath, each breath. Again, drop your memory of what the last breath was and be with each breath right now. And when there's a sense of ease, what are the sensitive parts of your body that would really like a little bit of extra energy? Learn how to feed those. Learn how to search them out and feed them. And that's where the concentration becomes really satisfying, and your tendency to want to wander off someplace else gets weaker and weaker. And the sense of being with the body is a lot stronger. That this really is the world in which all the parameters are there described in that description of right mindfulness. Totally with the breath. Ardent, alert, and mindful. And greed and distress with reference to the world are further and further away. So you want to make sure you're not carrying a lot of excess baggage into your meditation. Or to make a comparison. And you better hurry up and make this comparison before there are no longer any people who would recognize it. It's like having film in your camera. And you've been taking pictures, 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 and they're all there in the film. And you have to think of opening up the back of the camera so that all the pictures are gone, wiped out by the light. You don't want to carry them into the meditation. Or if your camera has an SD card, you think of erasing all the pictures on the SD card. Now we can be totally right here and have a sense that this is where you really belong. In the beginning it's kind of wobbly, because the mind is more used to being back in those other worlds and gathering all those other little bits of information. But here you want to drop it all. So it takes a while to get used to being in this new place, but it is your safe place. The mind has a strange tendency to want to stay in areas where it's familiar. And even though it's suffering, the fact that it's familiar with these old ways of being tends to make it un unwilling to move into something new, because the new areas are new, they require new skills, and there's a different sense of you. But after all, you begin to get used to the fact that this being a meditator is a good place to, to be, and it's a good person to be. The world of the meditation is a good place to be. You find you can get your balance and keep it here. And ideally this becomes your default mode. Where you really are at rest, where you really are in a safe place. Not identifying with things that would easily get you wounded. And placing your happiness in an area where no one else can even know about it. If other people can see your happiness, sometimes they may want to take it away from you. But here it is, it's based on your breath. Nobody else can experience your breath the way you do. It's based on your internal sense of the body. Nobody else can experience that. And if you can find happiness here, it's totally secure, free from any danger. Another quote from John Lee, he says, if you have a happiness that other people know about, it's not safe. It's only the things that other people don't know. That's where you're really safe, and you've got it right here. The way you experience the body from within, that's totally yours. So make it your home. And realize that it's a much better home than all the other shacks you've been living in for who knows how long.